<laughs> it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. Like a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> Equal education is a movement of parents, learners, teachers, and the community as a whole to better the system of education in South Africa. We don't want a better life. We don't want a better life. We don't want a better life. Hi, my name is Bayanda Mazwi and I'm from COSET, the Center of Science and Technology in Kailicha. My name is Lele Twikiti. I'm a grade, learn, grade 11 learner in, in Hero Crazy High School and I'm six, 17 years old. Hi, my name is Lukanyi, so I'm from Crayford Den, doing grade 12 in Hector Peterson. I'm Patricia Shushwana, 17 years old, doing grade 11 in Crayford High School. Hi, my name is Tando Diamara from Kensington High. I'm in grade 12. Um, I'm 19 years old. One of the reasons why I was sleeping here tonight, we've been marching, we've been sending letters to the minister, our mothers have been sending letters, and she didn't respond to any of those. And one thing um, Equal Education decided to do, decided to do um, a summit, People's Summit for Quality Education, and called many different organizations um, from uh, uh, around, 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 around Cape Town. And around the world. Around, around, the world. South, Africa. around South Africa. And then um, the minister come up on the 25th and, and tell us that um, she will try to build the math schools in Eastern Cape by 2014. But what about what about the, the time in between? Because it's 2011 now, and the, the, there's two years to come. And those children from Eastern Cape are walking long distances. They have um, broken windows. They don't even have a decent class to study in. And then she expects a, a, a good metric pass rate. What do you think about this, guys? And um, if, I, if I'm right, I think last year on the 21st of March, it was 2010, right? Yeah. And uh, the minister was supposed to to give us the policy on the April, first of April, was, was supposed to sign it, but she didn't sign it. And then one thing that she's always telling us is that she will build the school on the on 2014, and then they don't have enough money to do that. But one thing that we are asking her is that if she's not willing to give us um, our future, because what we are talking about is our future. She has to build schools, she has to give us what we want because she's the minister, she's there for us, she's there, we voted for her. And then if she doesn't give us what we want, I don't know what other people think, but I think we have to fight for this. And the other thing is, um, she herself set the deadline of, for that um, by 31st March, she will approve the policy then we decided that um, on 1st of April this year, we will remind her that um, she, she must be already give us the, the policy, and she didn't do that. And if I, if I remember correctly, at the People's Summit on the 25th of June, she told us that she won't lie to us, okay. but she started with a lie, because she told us that um, she doesn't have the powers to approve um, the minimum norms and standards for school infrastructures and while she has while she has and she has to wait for the approval of the provincial embassies but um, the constitutional the government's constitution their constitution the laws that they put in place states clearly states that she can only consult with the embassies but the deciding vote lies upon her which was a lie and she always beat around the bush telling us, um, okay, we're gonna build schools, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. On my point of view, like in the South African government, like for instance, my personal uh, thing, when I wrote to the government asking for help because my school is also like a temporary school. When it's hot on a, on a day, my school is very hot. When it's cold, it is very cold. And what does the government do? When you do write a letter to the government, like for instance, I was mocked by one of the government reps, uh, they told me like, um, 
Why are you writing this? You should be focusing on your English. They didn't focus on the thing I wanted. What they came was, I felt insulted by the government because uh, they like, when you do uh, try to do something about it, and then like, you are the one to be blamed after the day, you know? And I don't think it's right from our government because what are we without our education? One thing that's mostly, it pains me about our education system is that our teachers, our teachers fear, they fear that if they say that we support equal education, we support those that are not fighting for their education, they will get fired, they will lose their jobs. Because, mm -hmm. at, 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 like at my schools, at my school, my teachers do support equal education, but they don't want to let that show because they fear that my principal will fire them or they like, they'll be like, they'll face like legal challenges and all that. But then it's so unfair that even our principal are oppressing our teachers because they are the ones who should be taking a stand. They are the ones who should be mobilizing in our schools. They should be helping us, but instead they're not helping us. They're oppressing us as learners in such a way that they're violating our rights too. Because my principal told me that I do support equal education, but it's so unfair that I, she, he, he doesn't like, he doesn't allow me as a learner to make a presentation in one of the classes for like to learners to tell them that Here's an organization fighting for our education, fighting for quality and equality in education. It doesn't work like that. Our teachers, my teachers fear that if they allow me to make a presentation in class, in one class about equal education, something wrong will happen. They'll face the challenges. You know, it's so, so unfair. And the irony about this whole thing is um, the minister expects the metric results to be 100%. But without the, the basic tools, the equipment that they need, how can the metrics get that to that 100%? How can every child pass? Yeah. And the, the, the problem is that um, they introduce a um, new curriculum for us. And for instance, we, we, we did have um, OBE, and the OBE wa wa was here. But they, they, they just give us the work, and we don't have the resources to work with the work. They, they, it, it, it's the same thing that they give us a paper, and they don't give us a pen. So how can you work without the resources? Because they just bring um, OBE, to, OBE to us, and then the OBE here has, um, those textbooks um, from OBE have um, um, very big um, words, like their terminology, it's, it's not easy to be explainable. And our parents didn't go to school. Some of our parents didn't go to school. And it's difficult for them to help us with our homemakes. And what the minister should do was that to introduce those curriculums and then give us resources to work with the, to work with the curriculums. Because in those, in those textbooks, there are those work who need um, to be done by computers, like the research yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then we don't have um, computers in, in our schools. And that is a really problem um, for us. And I think also um, one thing that um, our minister should do because when they are introducing a new curriculum they should also take our teachers and go and train them train because them properly, yeah. the problem that we are facing is that um, when the teacher is teaching in class and all doing that stuff and then when you ask her or him a question might be maybe he don't know then he feels like uh, I, I don't know Undermined. how to, yeah because yeah. they are not well trained for that for that um, for this curriculum of, of, of the new curriculum, yeah, the new curriculum. Being introduced every time. And, and that's a problem to us because if the government is expecting 100% pass rate for the metric, that won't happen because our teachers firstly are, are not well, are well trained and then we are, full, we are learning under critical conditions. And also, if um, um, South Africa is expecting to have doctors, engineering and all that stuff that won't happen because if our education is not perfectly uh, one thing that will happen our government will employ people from another countries to come in and to and, and, uh, and do work here then that that means our country won't um, won't survive because our, our economy will, will drop I can say now in South Africa, the most of, of the of the thing that uh, the learners fail is like is their home language. And then, for instance, like I at, at school I do English as my home language, and then at home I speak is closer with my with my parents. And then, so they, whenever I fail, or like they, I would get blamed. Like mm. I should read more. I do read more. I do read more. Like for instance, my books. I I, I do study, and that if if that's best what I can do. Like the mindset of the whole country is that um, if you don't speak English, you are nothing. Which puts down our Even indigenous, like, I indigenous um, languages. You find out like, if like, we, we, we're conversing 
me and my <laughs> friends and stuff, or other people, when they talk in, when they speak English exactly. and they make a mistake, we tend to laugh at them. I mean, it's their, it's not their own language. We don't laugh at English speakers when they uh, misinterpret closer yeah. words. But we, it, I, I think it's like we, all, we ourselves are also killing ourselves. Yeah. We are oppressing ourselves because we want to promote the white man. Mm. Because if, if a white man does this, then it's right. And that is one of our problems because we like, sometimes it's very difficult to understand another language, even if, if it's English or not. But it's very, under, uh, it's very not understandable when it comes to, to pronunciation and when it comes to you, you have to go and research because um, English is not our um, mother tongue. The problem is it, they, are, they want us to speak English very well, but yeah. our, 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 our English teachers are blacks. So even them, they don't understand English very well. They are not <laughs> fluently, so sometimes they are speaking close mm -hmm. while it's an English class and then the government is expecting us to speak English very well and we can't. The other thing is that even the fact that English is a universal language, it also adds to the, the language crisis we have in our education. Because I find it hard to read my own mother tongue. Really, I find it hard. And then when I go to an English dictionary, I find it hard to understand the word because it's sort of like, it, the, the, the other dictionaries doesn't explain clearly like what the word means. So then I have to go through the internet, which the internet I do not have, I do not have free access to. And then at some point, if the internet had like closer, where you type a word in closer and then you find it, maybe things would be like much easier for us. But then at some point they wouldn't because not, more, not, not all of us have internet access. In government as a whole, they're willing to put more money in in good places, in places where there's good condition. Mm. Like, it, when it comes to education, the former Model C school, private schools, they get more money from the school, from the government, and it's for them to improve the, themselves. It's, I think it's because um, with the Model C schools, it, 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 it won't make the government cover a lot of money because it's already beautified, it's, all, it's already has everything, they're just adding to it. Other than in, those, in our schools where you need to, they need to start from Stretch. the roots yeah. and, and do it, things properly. And um, I found it um, very important for us as learners of South Africa to commit in ourselves in such organization as equal education because it's where we express our views about our uh, uh, about our education and it's where we we, we show um, we, we show ourselves how much this means to us and how much we want change in our country for instance um, Zimbabwe is, is a very poor country but Zimbabwe when it comes to education mm. is very 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 good because uh, because, because the, the government is, is focusing on education. Exactly. education that's my point that's my point is focusing on education that's that that, that is one of the things that makes Zimbabwe special because um, the government of Zimbabwe put more put more money in education and then most of the people come ca coming from Zimbabwe are those educated ones because they they they, they, they like know everything because they, they, they are educated enough but our government does not focus on on education which is a problem for us because we we, 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 we believe that through education we can change the country as, as, as a whole and through education we can um, take our parents to those shakes and, 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 and build them new homes and, and, and actually, actually build a new future for us and Right now, our government does not do anything to, 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 to work with us. We want a relationship um, with the government, the government to work with us, and we, we, we only demand what is best for us. We are not demanding one thing that will be useless at the end of the day. We are demanding what is right, and within all the rights that we have, we only demand one right, the right to education. My dream is to become a forensic scientist. My dream is to be a medical practitioner, practitioner, and help, like, improve medicine and health in the whole of Africa. My dream is to become a gyno. My dream is to become a political analyst. My dreams are just helping people, and not only myself benefit from something, but with the help of people.
Street Talk here on CTV every Thursday at 7 p.m. I'm from Crazy High School and I'm six, 17 years old. Hi, my name is Lukanya, so I'm from Crayfontaine doing grade 12 in Hector Peterson. I'm Patricia Shushwana, 17 years old, doing grade 11 at Lukhazi High School. Hi, my name is Tando Diamara from Kensington High, I'm in grade 12, um, I'm 19 years old. One of the reasons why I was sleeping here tonight, we've been marching. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bayanda Mazwi and I'm from COSET, the Center of Science and Technology in Kailicha. My name is Lele Chukiti, I'm a grade, learn, grade 11 learner in, in her teachers and the community as the whole. To better the system of education in South Africa. We've been sending letters to the minister. Our mothers have been sending letters, and she didn't respond to any of those. And one thing, um, Equal Education decided to do, decided to do um, a summit, people summit for quality education, and called many different organisations um, from uh, uh, around, 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 around Cape Town, and around the world. Around was a can not voting if we want to build our nation the problem with the somalians just want to experience something else than a black man blinkers on this day as about to have sex and then i put crap but it's nice <laughs> equal education is a movement of parents learners